Hi there, it's Tessa with HipOver50.com. So, second in my series of why would an American want to move to the UK? Today I'm going to talk about health. So I'm Tessa with HipOver50.com and I basically am talking about my journey moving over to England after the age of 50 and what it's like for me here, what it might be like for you. So come along with me as I discover all that there is to offer for life in England. So why would an American want to move to the UK for health reasons? Well, I'm going to give you a few really great ones. Um, first of all, one of the main considerations for our health is, of course, access to good, affordable, or free health care, something that is not a right in the U.S., but definitely is for residents of the UK. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, there's really no substitute for the peace of mind that free or low-cost health care gives you. Let's face it, that is gold. Um, and it's something really nobody in the U.S. knows what that feels like. I can remember coming to the doctor's office when I first moved here and then just walking out without anybody asking me for a credit card or a health care plan or, you know, expecting a bill to come in the mail. It's really nice. And it means you're just thinking about your health. You're not thinking about how much it's going to cost you. So that goes true with no matter your income or status, Healthcare is available to all here, and that's the norm in the UK and actually most of Europe. So yes, you pay a little more in taxes, but it means that no one will get turned away because they've got a pre-existing conditions or they have lack of insurance or inability to pay. So it also means, and this is a big distinction, that in the UK, healthcare is not for profit. It's for the benefit of the residents. Whereas in the U.S., healthcare is definitely for profit. It's for the profit of the medical profession, the uh, pharmaceutical companies, and of course the insurance companies. This small distinction makes a huge difference to how healthcare is provided because decisions about what's right for you are made between you and your GP here or your general practitioner. Whereas in the U.S., the any insurance companies get to decide whether or not you can have that procedure or whether by whether or not they'll pay for it. So that is quite a big difference. And by the way, we're not talking about quality of health care here because I think that goes without saying that quality of health care is equal on both sides of the Atlantic. I mean, the U.S. and the U.K. both have excellent doctors and hospitals. Um, of course, it does mean you may have longer waits. You may not be able to just go ahead and schedule that you know, knee replacement. You may have to wait for it. Although I've noticed that every time I have needed care almost immediately, I've gotten it. No problem. So if you do have urgent need, typically you are prioritized and they will follow up with you. So, I mean, if you're really concerned about being, you know, at the back of the queue for that operation, that knee operation, you can always opt and pay for private health care insurance. However, you will most likely still be seen by the same doctor in the same hospitals. So I think that means, that explains, I should say, why health, comes, health outcomes in the UK are, are more, you know, steady, less variable than they are in the U.S., um, even though the quality of care is the same on both sides of the pond, you have overall better health outcomes across the board here in the UK because everybody, regardless of status or income, has access to good health care. So they're more likely to get a better outcome. They're more likely to be cured or recover from that illness or get that operation. But in the U.S., yeah, you have a great health outcome if you have great insurance or, you know, Limit, unlimited ability to pay for it. But if you don't have great health insurance and you don't have the unlimited ability to pay, then your outcome may not be so good because you just can't get the care. So I think that's pretty important. Um, of course, not everybody who is in the UK is eligible for unlimited free health care. You do have to be a legal resident to get all of the benefits. However, even as a visitor, you, are, you can access free emergency care and free basic health care. So that's pretty important. Nobody will be asking you for your credit card or what your health plan is. They'll just say, come on in, we'll take care of you. So I'll try to um, put a link in the description below about how you can find out more about how much health care you're entitled to as a visitor. So, of course, talking about health, we the discussion wouldn't be complete without talking about the elephant in the room, and that is COVID. Now, of course, Britain had a very high death toll at the beginning of the pandemic, 
But once the vaccinations rolled out, we were on the, you know, the front edge of the wave on that. Um, people were happy to take them. They were happy to get boosters as the pandemic rolled on. And we finally got our death toll down and our health outcomes from COVID became better. However, the U.S. had a higher death toll than Britain, especially during the Omicron wave. And I think that's just because people just don't feel able to take time off work to take care of themselves or to recover from COVID. In fact, I was in the U.S. last week and I was surprised at how many people were still wearing masks. I mean, everywhere. It really surprised me, all ages. Whereas here in the U.K., the only people that are wearing masks are usually elderly or maybe people that are health compromised, and you don't even see it in the news anymore. It's kind of a non-issue at this point. So I think maybe in the U.S. people still feel a little bit at risk. So that is something to consider. Um, what are some other health reasons to move here? Well, I've talked about better air quality before, which of course is a big factor if you suffer from any kind of respiratory illness, you know, asthma, um, allergies. Um, when I was in Boston last week, I took a look at the air quality and it was 65, which is moderate um, air pollution. At the same time, London's air quality was at two, which is almost zero air pollution. So I think the air that you breathe is pretty darn important, not even if you have any health condition, but just for general quality of life, don't you? How about water quality? Um, what country does a better job of protecting its residents from unsafe drinking water and poor sanitation? Well, guess what? The UK comes in at one, which is the highest score you can get. And the US score is a 26, which is just below Canada and Australia for reference. So on water quality, uh, the UK government does a better job of protecting its citizens against poor or unsafe drinking water and poor sanitation. That's pretty important. Um, how about food health standards? Well, we don't often think about that, but you know, it's something I think we also expect the government to sort of do in the background to kind of protect us from that. I mean, I recently I've been seeing a lot of listeria outbreaks in the US, um, not something I've ever seen here, although I'm sure it's possible, but um, are US food standards up to those of the UK and Europe? Uh, I mean, there's jokes over here about how the U.S. treats its chickens with bleach or chlorinates them, which doesn't happen here. Um, both of the U.S. and the U.K. have very good and high food standards. However, the U.K. has higher welfare standards for animals and better environmental protections. So I think that's pretty important. If you believe animal health means better food, as I do, then I think the U.K. definitely gets a thumbs up there. Happier animals is always a good thing. So last but not least, what is that number that sort of adds it all up? Well, it's life expectancy. I mean, how long you live, yeah, it can be down to genes, but I think it also has something to say about the environment you live in. And that certainly has to play a part, doesn't it? So the U.S. life expectancy in 2020 was a little over 77 years old, whereas in the U.K., it comes in at about 81 years old. So we've got four years, a little bit longer life expectancy. And in fact, I think I read somewhere recently that the U.S. life expectancy had actually dropped in the past couple of years. Of course, that could be due to COVID, people not being able to access health care during the pandemic. But that sort of speaks volumes, doesn't it? Um, because the U.S. is the world's largest economy. I think we are down at number five, but we do take care of our people here. Um, just for reference, the highest life expectancy in the world is Macau at 85.4 years, with Japan a close second at 84.8 years. So there you go. Some of the reasons to consider moving to the UK if you're American, thinking about your options, maybe planning for retirement or already in retirement, and wondering where you can find your best healthy life for the rest of your life. I think great or you know, free or affordable health care, um, good air and water quality, great food health standards, and a high life expectancy speaks volumes about life here in the UK. It may not always be a bed of roses, but today the sun is shining, and I think it's certainly worth considering if you want to spend more time here and get to know it and see if it's right for you. So of course, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to see them below and happy to answer them. And thank you so much for watching and coming along with me on my journey of discovering what life in England is like. So I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.